Okay, so today on Holmes I Do I, we're gonna go over grease gun, greasing your suspension on your car. And it works the same on trailers or anything else. Just because we're on a car doesn't mean it can't be just about anything else. But a couple things you'll need, rags. You're gonna use a lot of these. You'll need grease, grease gun, I'll show you how to assemble. They come anywhere from a basic grease gun to pneumatic. But either work, Will work just fine. It's just how much do you have to do and how often are you going to do it. So every grease gun is made up of a couple parts. You have the main barrel that has a grease tube in it. You have the actual pump. The only difference between a manual and a pneumatic is this one just takes air. You pull the trigger, it pumps. These you just got to cycle. Right? The better ones have an air trap on it which which you, you'll push this down to get the air out of the system so it can start pumping grease. So from there, you either have a couple options. You can either have straight hard lines. If you have easy to get to fittings, these are pretty good. They'll snap on, they're always tight to get back off. If you have 90 degree fittings, that these will snap together and you can go into tight areas. These will come in handy. I'll show you where we'll use that. Then you have to decide what type of hose you want. We always use these flexible hoses, but if it's easy, if it's easy to get to, these little solid ones that come with it, they'll work just as well if you can get to everything with it. So these just thread together. It's just a eighth inch pipe. Eighth inch pipe thread, it just screws on. Half, half inch wrench. This just tightens down. The birds are really going at it today. So it's towards the end of June and it's hotter than you know what outside. Otherwise I'd have the garage door closed. So you would just snug that up and with the plunger released you'll be able to cycle it. Hold your air button down for a couple pumps just get the air out of the system. Right. So what you do is you'll cycle it. Put just a little, just make sure that this lever stays unlocked. Right. So lever forward. Okay, so I want to point out this little quick coupler we use all the time. It's made by a little company called Lock Lube. And what you'll find is that if you're doing very much lubing of anything, this makes it so much easier. And when you buy these, they come with the replacement seal and everything. So the combination of this flexible hose and this lock lube attachment makes lubing your car, your lawnmowers, bicycles, tractors, trailers, anything so much easier. These things leak and break all the time and if you don't have them on just perfect but they work. If you get them on just right they'll snap on and they'll grease with whatever you need just fine. But these once you expand it and lock it on to your grease cert it'll stay on and it'll do a great job for you. So those will be in the descriptions as well. So take a look at it. Also this 90 degree fitting. You know inside this collar is the grease fitting. There's a grease fitting right there that that lube lock will lock onto or even the straight will lock onto it. So get those. A good grease gun. Spend a little bit of money on a grease gun. We'll spec one out for you. And you'll have it for a long time unless you lose it. Or you loan it out and they lose it which happens too. That and some good grease and you'll be able to do about any maintenance you need to do. So check those out in the descriptions below. You have to make sure that this lever is all the way back. Okay so what you'll do is you'll take your grease tube take this cap off
That'll go in the tube. It'll pop the top just like you're eating a peanut can. Okay, so then we'll screw the body onto it. We'll un unlock the plunger. So I always hold the button down just a little bit to get some of the air out of the system. There we go. From there, those grease will start coming out. You got to get the air out of the system. If the air is not out of the system, it can be hard to get the grease start flowing. All right, so let's go grease the vehicle. So if you go into your manual of your car, you're, you'll find all the grease points. But I'll give you several of them here. So right there is your, your tie rod end links, your ball joints. On this, there's a, there's a grease fitting upper and lower on this. And there's a grease fitting up top. Okay, to show you the grease points on this Chevy pickup truck, we're going to take off this front driver's tire. So one thing you need to know about, especially most of the newer vehicles, these are only beauty rings sitting on here. So these are just plastic caps. The actual lug nut is under there. Okay, before you do anything with the grease inserts, wipe them off first. So these grease inserts are on a lot of your older ball joints and a few other points. A lot of the newer stuff, they're all sealed so you can't grease them. Okay, so just like we talked about at the bench, so we've got a couple options. So this is a 90 degree attachment with a standard grease cert fitting. It would just typically just snap on, we'd grease it. Sometimes these things can be a booger to get off. That's, that's why we, we went through this quick change one that basically goes over it and locks on. But I'll show you both. So with that locked on, you just pump it full of grease. Make sure you don't get no grease on the brakes. And what I'm looking for is in here, I'm looking to see a little movement in the grease. And if you can see right here, the grease is starting to ooze out. That's what I'm looking for. And we just unlock it and you go to the next grease point we're going to do the tie rod in if you go into your manual it'll show you areas that need greased and you might you might have to get a full service manual but online anymore that's pretty available so i still have this 90 degree connector on it works just like any other you just snap it over to the connector and we're just going to pump some grease into it. And in the descriptions, I'll put some grease and a gun and some fittings in there for you as a reference. Now what I'm watching for is this little boot to swell a little bit. You may not see grease come out of this. I'm watching for it to swell just a little bit. That way I know there's grease in there. And so the reason why I like that quick disconnect is sometimes getting these off <clears throat> is a little difficult. Especially if you're up inside of an area where you're in awkward positions. Sometimes you have to use the 90. But if I can do it without, I'll always use that quick disconnect. So just as a reference, this truck has 290,000 miles on it. It's maintained regularly, and it's an older Chevy, so it's it's had its 
not just had it has its rust issues but mechanically it's pretty sound it's got a few leaks here and there but overall it's a really good truck all right let's find some more areas okay so we did the upper ball joint the tie right in now on this the lower ball joint is stuck up inside of here and that is where that quick disconnect really comes in handy so I'm going to disconnect my little 90 degree attachment now I'm kind of flying blind here because the camera is right really where I need to be but it's hard to see right here is your grease fitting so we're going to connect that right in there so we might have to go back to yep we're going to go back to the 90. i'm going to put this 90 back on here okay so we're just going to snap this 90 on looks like i got enough clearance to get this on there There we go. Oh, it's going in. Okay. So I heard it pop just a little bit, so I know it's coming out. And then pop that off. And then I just do the same for the other side. Upper and lower ball joints, tie rod ends. We should, we probably have a Pittman arm that needs grease. So we'll get into some of that. But from there, it's just going through and finding all your points, greasing them. The process is exactly the same. So with that, let's go over a few things on the bench. I'll see you there. All right, so this is probably more for the tire chains video. But make sure that when you're putting these back on, if you have some lug nuts that have, are damaged, these only cost a couple dollars and what I would suggest is like these are three dollars at, at O'Reilly's put a couple in the glove box because when you're on the side of the road and one gets lost you know where one's at right so there's a little anti-seize on there and just what I do is I always start and finger tight And they'll, they'll seat themselves, but you just go crisscross. And I'll go into a lot more detail with all that in a tire chains video. Okay, so we're adjusting our torque wrench to 140 foot pounds. That's what the manual says it needed. Now on the side of the road, you're not gonna torque it. You're gonna tighten them down enough to to get out and then it's you can do this later so you're just going to go around crisscross that way the wheel has a chance to seat and then you'll hear it click so, listen for the click. So that's the click. It says, I'm at 140 foot pounds. So this is all just bonus stuff for greasing your vehicle. But, you need to know this stuff too. So, these plastic covers screw on to the back of the lug nut. And they're basically just finger tape. It's almost 100 degrees out here, so... See me sweating, that's why. Now these four ways, I love these things. 
and you're just going to take these to these are just cosmetic that's all these are you just finger tight okay so wheels on this side's been greased I'm going to grease the other side but I don't need to drag you through all that so that's greasing a vehicle and uh, let's go over it tell you what all we did okay everyone so that's just basic greasing of your vehicle simple maintenance you need to do depending on the year of your car you may or may not have any points that needs greased but you know this is looked at as just basic car maintenance you can save a lot of money doing the simple stuff yourself and not taking it into the shop although I think you need to have some kind of relationship with the shop basic stuff like this you can take care of right so that's just basic grease gun tube of grease tube of grease to go through just about the whole car especially if it's a newer car you may not even have points of grease it might already be sealed so you may not even have a choice there but they got uh, the basic hand pump one I also have air so when I'm going around a car that hose will come off and go on the air the compressor it, it makes it really nice you don't got to pump it but one thing I got to add you know we took the tire off this vehicle anytime you take your tires off that's our next video how to change your tire make sure that when you take off your lug nuts put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads right because trying to get these things off in the driveway well, that's easy but when you're doing it when there's a car doing 55 60 miles an hour behind you that's something else so always make sure you use anti-seize and always always torque them down you don't want to find out when you're broke down on the highway or your daughter or your wife's broke down on the highway that you can't get the lug nuts off right torque them down it's easy I'll put all this stuff in the descriptions you know we're an Amazon affiliate now so it'll all be in there go out grease your vehicle do some basic maintenance and we'll see you on the next tip this is home side do I